Hi everyone, here's another MATLAB demo. This is actually a two-part demo. In this video, we'll go over some of the theoretical background of the problem we're solving and write a basic MATLAB function. In the next video, we'll continue with the MATLAB and do some advanced vector manipulation. Consider a vehicle driving at a constant speed v on a flat circular track with radius r. For simplicity, we'll model the vehicle as a point mass. If you recall from basic physics, the lateral acceleration is given by a equals v squared over r. If I tell you the lateral acceleration of a vehicle is 18 meters per second squared, that probably means very little to you. When talking about the magnitudes of accelerations, we can actually express it in terms of g's to make it more relatable. This is called g-force, which is actually sort of a misnomer, but I'll save that discussion for another video. I'm sure you've heard of g-force in popular press, such as fighter pilots blocking out when attempting complex maneuvers because the g-force was too strong. A similar principle actually applies to vehicles. Exceeding a certain g-force on a turn can cause your vehicle to spin out. To express the lateral acceleration in g's, all we have to do is divide v squared over r by g, so we're normalizing the lateral acceleration with respect to Earth's gravitational acceleration. 18 meters per second squared translates to just about 2 g's, which probably strikes you as a lot. If you're driving and you take a turn such that you experience 2 g's of acceleration, you're not in a good place. You'll most likely spin out or lose control. You can comfortably handle a curve up to about 0.6 g's, depending on your tires and other parameters. Anything above that can possibly mitigate safety, so it's important to stay below this threshold during a turn. In this example, we want to find the max speed at which a vehicle can negotiate a turn with a constant radius without exceeding 0.6 g's. We'll compute the lateral accelerations of our vehicle from v equals 5 to v equals 20 meters per second, in increments of 0.5 meters per second and a curve radius of 50 meters. But before we jump into the MATLAB, let's do a quick analysis of this scenario. This class is engineering analysis using numerical methods, it's not just a MATLAB class. We know we're going to be calculating a bunch of lateral accelerations given a bunch of velocities and a constant radius. You should always be thinking about plotting your results. Is there a way to guess what the plot should look like? Well, we know a equals v squared over r over g, so the lateral acceleration is proportional to the velocity squared. In other words, this is a parabola centered at zero, so it's going to look something like this. We can actually discard the entire left half of the graph since negative velocities don't make sense in the context of this problem. So we should expect that our graph of acceleration versus velocity looks something like this. It might be tempting to dive right into MATLAB, but you should get in the habit of checking simple relationships between variables first. If you do this, you can ascertain the accuracy of your plots later on. In fact, you'll be forced to do this once we get to differential equations at the end of the semester. You'll be asked to hand sketch the solution to an equation, then you'll verify it in MATLAB. Might as well get used to it now. Alright, let's finally move into MATLAB. First, we need to define the curve radius, g, the velocity vector, and our acceleration threshold. We said that the velocities range from 5 meters per second to 20 meters per second in increments of 0.5 meters per second. The curve radius is 50 meters, g equals 9.81 meters per second squared, and our acceleration threshold is 0.6 g. I'm leaving this as 0.6 instead of 0.6 g because all of our accelerations will be calculated in g's. Let's skip to the very end of the code to write the function which computes the lateral accelerations. Each function needs to start with the word function. Notice how the word turns blue, indicating a MATLAB keyword. Immediately after the word function comes our outputs. In this case, we only have one output, the lateral acceleration. Let's call it A. Now we need the function name. Let's say it's lat excel. And finally, we put all the inputs in parentheses. We need a V, R, and G as the inputs to our function. And don't forget the end at the bottom. You'll notice I already have some comments describing the function and the variables. I also indicated if each quantity is a vector or a scalar. This helps outside users understand the function better, and it also helps you debug. Not carefully tabulating variables as dimensions and values is probably the number one reason why students get problems wrong. Okay, so the function itself is actually pretty simple. 
We just need to type out the formula for lateral acceleration, which is A equals V squared over R over G. Note how we put the dot right before the caret because V is a vector quantity. If we want to square a vector, we have to use dot notation. If you try running the code without the dot, you're going to get an error. We don't need dots next to the r or the g because both of these quantities are scalars. And that's it with the function, so let's scroll back up and pick up where we left off. So we just wrote the function, but now we need to call it in our script. We can do this by doing excels equals lat excel velocities radius g. I'm using different variable names than what we used in the function. I'm storing the computed lateral accelerations in a variable called excels instead of a. That's perfectly fine. When we call the function, we can use different variable names because they're just variables. The names themselves don't matter. When MATLAB executes this line, it'll basically say, okay, this variable called velocities is equivalent to this variable called v, and this variable called radius is the same as r, etc. What this implies is that the order of the variables matters. For instance, if we flip radius and g, it'll use 50 as the value for gravitational acceleration instead of 9.81, since it's listed as the last input. Uncomment the plot commands and run the code. I plotted the accelerations using blue dots with a connecting line, and we also have a horizontal red dashed line at the 0.6g threshold generated from the built-in yline function. There are some additional arguments to the yline function, such as handle visibility off. Basically, this means it won't appear on the legend we add later in the demo. Read the documentation to learn what label horizontal alignment left does, although it's pretty self-explanatory. There are a few key points we can observe from the plot. First, we can see that we meet the threshold a little over 17 meters per second. So if we drive on a curve of radius 50 meters at under 17 meters per second, we should be fine. Anything over 17 meters per second might be dangerous. And second, the shape of the plot looks parabolic. This verifies our prediction we made at the beginning of the video. If the MATLAB plot looked different than our hand sketch, we know we made a mistake somewhere. Maybe we made a faulty assumption in our hand sketch, or maybe we had a bug in the code. Gradually checking your code is another great habit you'll want to adopt. It's no fun to write a bunch of code, run it, see that you messed up somewhere, and have to sort through hundreds of lines of code to find a bug that you might have written in line 10. And that's it for this part of the demo. In the next video, we'll use logical indexing and for loops to see which velocities induce a lateral acceleration within a certain range. See you soon.